Hi. Okay, today I am drawing some critical role stuff. And I've got a little bit of a start on it. I've got um, a real basic outline of the layout that I put together in Photoshop based on just a bunch of generic like photos of them from promotional things and pick and choose to, just to see what would look good in this layout. As some of you know, um, I do these things and then bring them to conventions to see if I can get them to sign them and stuff like that. And it's all in great fun. They're going to be at Rose City Comic Con in Portland in about a month. And I'm hoping to have this done by then. <laughs> no guarantees, because this is this is biting off a big bite right now. <clears throat> but hopefully, we'll see what we can do. Um, I haven't gotten an autograph ticket for them yet, but they are putting a few more on sale tomorrow. I didn't manage to get one last time they were on sale, and I have my fingers crossed that I'll be able to get one tomorrow. There's a very, very limited number, apparently, so I'm going to be on there early and spamming on there to try and get through and get one one autograph from each of them. But even if I just got one of them, I would take it because it's just whatever I can get. But meanwhile, I've got my layout here and I'm going to start with Matt because, well, one does. And let's see how this goes. Some of the actors have uh, their face in the center cut off between the two pages that are printed. So, we'll just switch to the new team to get those. today and my arm is sticking to the things that I've got here on the side of the drawing table. The available space on my drawing table is literally just enough to do this because this is a 13 by 19 drawing which is honestly in pencil these days about as big as I go because any more than that and well I really don't have a place to put it for one but also um, my eyes aren't what they used to be and I can't look close enough at a larger piece than this to get the detail that I like to get on these things.
in the early mid days of season one or campaign one from what she told us and she uh, goes to the, the fathom events at the movie theaters when they're doing their session zero starting new episodes and stuff like that and uh We had no idea, so it was kind of cool to find out. She doesn't tell us about any of the cool stuff going on, we have to find out the hard way. Um, lots of people started watching this movie, and so many, in fact, stuff and by the time I had gotten on there and the only people that were left were Sam and Allison so I was like okay well add them into the cart and you know, get what I can and went to check out and they were gone so even having them in your shopping cart doesn't mean they're held they're reserved and I found that out the hard way because I could have just hit go on the shopping cart immediately, but I was thinking they were in there and I was going to try and get the others, or, yeah, there was some extraneous circumstances that made me not check out quite immediately, and, uh, in the two minutes or so that it took for me to get in there and do it, they had vanished. <laughs> I should learn something like that. If only there were enough hours in the day for all the things. But this is why I'm doing this. I'm really trying. I'm really trying to give people things they'll enjoy watching and maybe it's uh, soothing or relaxing you know, to just sit and watch a portrait just come to life in front of you. I have been told that by 
by some of my friends that watching these things happen is, is like a great relaxation thing. faces because I've got their campaign one and two characters that I'm going to be putting out to the sides from each person and it's going to be very very complicated when it's done. I hope it looks good. I think it kind of looks pretty good on the layout but uh as you can maybe see here there's a couple of little things on the side that will be added in as it goes. Um, and I'll try and do one set of each of those things each day, I think, and that from now until uh, mid-September will probably be one thing to do every day, one group things to do every day and then I'll be pretty well set. thing creeping up on me like maybe for the start here project on Kickstarter or something like that and if you haven't seen my start here project on Kickstarter you gotta go check that out uh, start here the role-playing game is the simplified d20 system that's basically made to be able to teach anyone who's been uh, hesitant to get into 
an RPG because of the density of the rules. You know what I mean? These, some of these games have just so many giant books of rules. And my buddy Tim Beach, who is a brilliant role-playing game designer, is putting together this system, has basically put together a system. It's, it's pretty much ready to see the light of day. system that is very approachable to people who found it daunting. It's stripped down rules that I think the, the initial rule book is like 36 pages long. So it kind of harkens back to the days of the mid-70s when D&D was a pamphlet that they printed out. Xeroxed. Um, or typed up in Xerox. I think it was just typed. I think this was the days where people just had printers available to them. Um, it was just stapled down the middle. <laughs> so there wasn't that many pages. And that was original Dungeons and Dragons. were not quite as simple then. They were still using things like Fago and crazy concepts like that. So this this is that D20 system which is much more friendly than Thaco. Thaco, not, nobody's friend. I don't know. Anybody who's a big fan of Thaco anymore. Um, well, I take that back. I do know at least one person who is still running a Thaco game, and it's for his kids, which is crazy. Um, but hey, teach him math. <laughs> That's always a good thing. Um, but yeah, this, this uh, stripped-down system is very exciting and promising, and the Kickstarter will still be live when I post this, so you got time to get in on it and uh, be on the ground floor of getting a whole new generation, or even just hesitant groups of people involved in gaming. thousands of dollars on all of the books set up. There will be campaign settings. Uh, the painting that I'm going to be doing the cover for, uh, for the, the, the book that I'm going to be doing the cover for, that painting is of one of the campaign settings. Uh, I had a chance to talk to Tim about where he's going with that, and he gave me a pretty cool idea about what that cover could be, and then basically just set me loose on it. So, I put up a sketch, which is on the Kickstarter site. Right now, you can see it. And it's very likely going to be the cover to the more advanced set of rules where they get into campaign settings. Um, and the campaign settings are really versatile. Like, there's a lot of interesting different than high fantasy kinds of things that you can do with this. Or 
you know, kind of like Dimension 20 does, taking the rules and turning that high fantasy into something kind of different, kind of unexpected, or drawing from different Sorry, figuring things out while I'm talking, and that's proven to be a little challenging. <laughs> uh, drawing from different inspiration sources. Like imagining Candyland and Game of Thrones as being a crossover. If you haven't seen that on Dimension 20, I highly recommend it. Not that we're talking about other streamers while I'm drawing one group of streamers, but uh... They're all friends, and they all went to Brendan's wedding, right? So, should be cool. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, that's the one thing I've really found very inspiring about this whole group, is they all really seem to like each other, and it's kind of non-competitive. What Dimension 20 is doing is very different from what Critical Role is doing, and they all appreciate each other, and they've all played with each other in their own different groups, their own crews. Uh, so, Matt's been on Brennan's show, and Brennan's been on Matt's show, and everybody seems to love just gaming so much that they get along, despite the fact that they're in kind of, kind of competitive groups. I mean, in theory, everybody has a finite number of hours to watch streaming or watch a, a gaming show or something. Some people have more than others, but uh, no, there doesn't seem to be any real sense of, oh, we're, we're going to steal your market share kind of interaction between them. Which is really something to be aspiring towards in media production these days. I just, I love the idea that everybody just gets along and they don't hate each other for doing similar things because they're not that close. Seems like people who are a fan of one eventually also become a fan of the other. So I think they also realize they're constantly borrowing from each other's fan bases. Like we actually started watching Dimension 20 before we started watching Critical Role. Got into Critical Role because of Dimension 20, because we're watching the Escape from the Blood Key. Finding out he was a DM on a different show. I'm like, oh, we're gonna have to check that out too. And, uh... <laughs> now, every Thursday night, we're singing along with the theme song of it being Thursday night. <laughs>
Sorry, my mind drifted off again to other subjects that I just wasn't talking. Um, just really kind of planning out my day for tomorrow to make sure that I'm online in time to so far and thus I'm ending up going back into the face and working on little bits and pieces here and there to create a better sense of roundness to some of the forms as I'm doing this I'm seeing everything as shapes and shadows at first and getting all my shapes and shadows into place, then I gotta look at it and say, okay, well that's a three-dimensional object, so it's gotta look like a form more than a shape. And yeah, I have to break people down into like objects. It's very objectifying. Um, but that is literally the only way to make it look like a person. To me, at least, I've seen people who will do a painting, a portrait, and really just start out with basic forms and tighten them and tighten them until they're the person they're painting. And it's amazing to me because I just can't see that in my head. And once once a thing is on the page or the canvas. In their case, it's hard for me to look at it and see what needs to be changed to get it closer to the person. I probably could develop that skill, but I haven't yet. So, uh, for now, at least, it's just, uh, first and then turning them into forms as I go. <clears throat> now there are things I'm going to be changing in the layout as I build it. Mm 
really, really get the shadows dark. But that's not something I like to do. Because then it tends to get very smudgy very quickly. So I work with a mechanical pencil first because even in the heat where I'm sweating a little bit, I'm not too sweaty, but I am sweating a little bit. Um, it doesn't smudge nearly as bad as the Crazy 9B one does. And so I'm going to work with the stuff that can be kind of forgiving for now. And not smudgy. And then at the very end, I'm going to go in and do the ultra dark darks and then to get some fixative on it immediately basically after that's done so that the smudging is fairly well prevented that's my strategy to handle stuff like that you know there are some people who are just like well just draw with a piece of paper under your hand and I can totally do that draw with a piece of paper under my hand and you won't be able to see anything that's under the piece of paper on the video. So for you guys, I don't do it. sides on the blender. It's this side for the light stuff and this side for the dark stuff. And up here is the light stuff for sure.
things and personal. It's actually kind of necessary, really. But on the video, it might not look like much is changing. This first one defines a lot of edges for the others. So, everyone else's will hopefully be that much easier to form out because they'll be going right up to the edges of this one in a lot of cases, or the edges of the next ones that are done from this one. It's all kind of like building blocks.
So what I'm doing with dark areas, I'm pressing on that pencil really solid. And that's why I keep my pencil lead real short, because if I was to pull out a bunch of lead at once, it would definitely break. <laughs> like it did in the beginning. Um, when I'm doing really dark areas. A break or two now and then is not a big deal, but when I start breaking it constantly, then you start to be able to see where the breaks happened on the page. And sometimes the pencil will push a little bit when it breaks. And that starts to become kind of obvious too. It's probably not obvious watching how hard I'm pressing on things because I hold my pencil really weird. And that part's really obvious. Like, I'm sure everybody's looking at this going, dude, is a chicken. Why is he holding his pencil like a chicken? Um, <laughs> I always wondered that. Yeah, long, long ago. When I was learning to draw, it was before I was in kindergarten, I was drawing on everything. And they kind of teach you in kindergarten-ish like how society expects you to hold a pencil. I guess that's like the proper way to hold it. Um, so I was drawing way before I learned the proper way to hold a pencil and writing letters and things like that. So I didn't learn it. And... They tried to teach me, to train me, out of the way I'm holding it now. And I pretty much just was like, no. Um, I'm already doing this, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to grab the mechanic this to these people. Which, you know, sometimes it's good when kids are brats like that. They just stick to your guns. And... Now I have a... 
pencil technique where I hold it in a way that causes very little hand fatigue under a lot of pressure. So I don't constantly have to be changing what kind of pencil I'm using. All this is just the one mechanical pencil. And part of that is because I don't really get a lot of hand fatigue. Seeing things as shapes and not the object that it is, that kind of thing's gonna happen every once in a while where you just kind of lose track of what that object is that you're drawing and you just keep doing the shapes and that's actually not a bad thing. At least not in my book. smudginess. Uh, I thought I had a needed eraser here and it doesn't look like it. I have a ton of minis so there could be a needed eraser in there and I just don't know where. I'm 
be letting this sit for a characters because he's had a few so yeah I think I think I'll do four faces tomorrow if all goes well and because Matt's in there in the way I'll probably be doing it with Talus and covering Matt up or the the layout piece of Talus and covering Matt up because that will help me keep any further smudging from happening. So I'll probably put it like right there. And then get those four done tomorrow. Alright. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I will see you then. Bye-bye.